and welcome in everybody to the challenge after show the after show for the challenge we are here talking about episode 12 tonight it was called tinker taylor bunny spy at least i didn't no. know what the, at least that didn't give anything away this week ladies yes. finally they they must have listened to us they changed it right before this week and said that that damn guy <laughs> that pam girl that jenna girl they don't want any giveaways how are you ladies doing great uh that was the episode title I think so. I, that's what I wrote down. Yes. Was that maybe like the channel below MTV on your TV? <laughs> what did you get for the episode name? I have no idea. I didn't oh. look on purpose. Like I distinctively went like that and did. I looked literally stuff. two minutes before I I hit you girls up on the Zoom. So hopefully okay. that's what it is. But whatever. Either way, it's episode twelve. And uh, yeah, but before we get into the episode tonight, ladies, there's a lot of controversy brewing all over the internet. And it's because of our girl, well, not our girl, but a girl named Lolo, who uh, supposedly she says, guys, uh, that she was forced, she used the word forced, to leave the challenge by the producers. That's the first thing I want to get into. Do you believe her? Well, we broke uh, that news last week, Dan. Remember? We broke that live. That we, 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 we talked about it asked. very briefly she was yeah, that asked was our, to leave yeah but she came out and expanded on it and said she was forced to leave but she also ladies never said what the reason was other people speculated mm -hmm. saying that they thought that because she was an olympian if she got to the final no one would stand a chance which i don't really believe but lolo also never said why she was forced to leave just that she was forced to do it mm -hmm. so what do you ladies think of this is it true is it not let's start with this Okay, Pam, you go first. Okay, I mean, I think, <laughs> I think a million percent it's it's true. Again, breaking here on the uh, Us show, after show, where we said that it, it she left voluntarily. Dan, you said she looked happy. We all agreed. She seemed like a weight was taken off her shoulders. But then we got the word from MTVT that she was forced, asked to leave by production. They didn't use the word forced. So I think for sure it's true. I mean, she's saying it and they're saying it. So who's... Why wouldn't it be true? And two, I think it's uh, the, the biggest mystery wrapped in an enigma that she just brushes over addressing why. It's like, cause I would never quit, no, no, no. And did not say from what I read, at least in what I read, didn't say they didn't, I didn't read that they didn't want her in a final or that it wouldn't be fair. I read her saying my own teammates wouldn't even let me compete or wouldn't support me and it's like, you don't have teammates. This is a challenge. What are you talking about? This wasn't a team thing. Um, I think it's totally true. And my speculation is that her mental stability was worrisome. Uh, and- Do you think the producers asked her to leave because she wasn't mentally stable? So that's why they forced her to leave because she wasn't mentally stable. Okay. Jenna, what do you think? So I kind of have a biased view that that is the reason as well, because Pam, that's what you alluded to last week. So when I saw the tweets, so the first time I heard about Lolo being forced to leave by production was last week when you broke that news and you said that a lot of fans thought or read that it was because of her mental state and that MTV felt concerned about her mentality and where she was. And she was right. honestly having a breakdown and struggling. So they asked her to leave to take care of herself. So that's kind of, I can't help but see the situation like that because that's already in my head. That's already my view. But I think that that makes so much more sense than her leaving because she was going to kick ass in a final because guess what? We've seen her perform this season. And as much as I think Lolo is incredible, she's an Olympic athlete for a reason. You see it on her body, everything. She really struggled with some basic challenges in the competition for example running like five miles with something heavy on your shoulders that's not basic for us but right. that should be basic for somebody who's an olympian or like doing a rope hold like i know she's in um bobsled and oh track i'm failing to remember what her specialty is the um the hurdles hurdles yeah so maybe they don't do <laughs> rope climbing or do a lot of upper body but i'm sure you have to be well-rounded and work out everything so the fact that like a rope hold and running several miles with something heavy with weights was such a struggle to her surprises me. So I don't know. We don't know how she would have been in a, well, in a finals. The really. argument that she was, was so threatening really lose esteem because she didn't win any challenges. So and she, she didn't have a gold skull either. So there's no, there's no, why would the producers 
forced her to leave. She didn't have a gold skull yet. They had nothing to worry about because she literally wasn't in the final. And we know how these producers can can get storylines going so that she wouldn't even get close to winning. Like they could have made it so she didn't even get a gold skull in a way but with double elimination, I, whatever you want to do. You know what I mean? But here's what I'm confused by. If, if Lolo is having mental problems, like she's mentally unstable, and then she says that the producers forced her to leave, why wouldn't she want to keep that under wraps? Maybe the producers did her a favor and said, look, you're an Olympian. We don't want it out that you have men- you have mental, in, you know, not you're not stable mentally. So we'll just why don't you just say you want to leave for whatever reason, and we won't tell the world that you're mentally unstable. But then she goes out and tells the sells the world, hey, these producers forced me out and they suck. Maybe they were trying to help you out. So why would she do that? Is my I'm confused by Lolo in general. I, a, a, a million percent agree because I thought they were doing her a solid by letting her exit gracefully. There's the word. The gossip gracefully. we got was that she was a wreck and they didn't feel, you know, they had to let her go. And, and they, they had her the- exit gracefully. She said, I'm going to leave. Why would she then come out and say, I was forced to leave and not give any reason? Because that's the thing though, Pam, unless she is injured or mentally unstable, I don't think the producers can force you to leave. It seems like, I don't want to say it's illegal, but like, how can they kick you off a show when you didn't do anything wrong? They just don't like your storyline? Because like, you have a shitty yeah, storyline, you, you, you perform crappy all season. You can't get kicked off. Big T and Anissa would never be here then. Right. And I think in this case, that's a little bit naive just because it's television and the producers run everything. So they well, call all the shots. They can do whatever the hell they want, whether they agree, make it agree. secret. And I'm, I'm Mr. Jenna, I'm Mr. Conspiracy, so I True. totally get it. I just feel like it's a little outrageous for them to get rid of someone for not doing anything wrong. So so she came out and said, I was forced to leave with no reason why they gave her. I haven't found anything, but please, in the comments below, tell us if Lolo said why they forced her to leave, because I actually DM'd Lolo and asked her to come on the show this week. She never responded. I said, Lolo, please come on the show and tell me why they forced you to leave. The right. Because if it is a mental stability thing, then that that's that's okay if well, they then have to, if they maybe said her avoidance of it i'm sorry yeah i mean maybe with like or dan maybe as you said maybe they were the producers were being so gracious that like she doesn't even know that that's what it was maybe she oh. she maybe they literally were like listen we don't want you to blow your yeah. chances at the olympics you're clearly not you know what i mean it doesn't seem to be you're not you don't have a gold skull yet like you have the option to I don't know. Well, that's that's true. That's a really good take, Pam, because her psychological issues, I feel like, have been our perception. But I don't want everybody to run away with that, even though that's what we've clearly seen. It does feel a little bit. It feels kind of bad for everybody to sit here and talk about it without maybe her yeah. even knowing herself or that being the legitimate cause. I mean, that's what we see. I think it is pretty clear that she's struggling heavily mentally. She's crying every other time she's on screen. So. She obviously was having a breakdown. Where on the spectrum that is on mental health, I don't know. But I mean, we see it, we think it, but I don't want everyone to to put all the eggs in that basket if that's not the reason. But it is tricky because we don't know because she won't tell us. And what's interesting right. is the fact that she can say that MTV forced her out, but she can't say why is weird too, because I'm assuming she must have signed a contract or she's under an NDA. Someone so it's already she got paid off. Well, they said they, she got paid uh, off to not, to maybe to possibly not say anything as well. well but she she already, so what we did get told to us was that they were just seeing so much of her crying and breaking down and they were really worried and told her she had to leave. So maybe that's just what it was. I don't, well, well like, yeah. So if people know anything more, please comment. Yeah. But the other Lolo news is, and this is where I might not be as naive, Jenna. This is where Mr. Conspiracy, <laughs> Mr. Conspiracy Dan might come in to play. <laughs> is Lolo claims, Pam, you're gonna love this. Okay, Lolo sorry, claims, I was trying to get the facts because again, I, I don't want to t- spread mental. Ill- like I take it, I feel, I truly, my heart goes out for Lolo. I, it does. Um, Lolo claims, Pam, that okay. Big T and CT did not land in the drop zone and they should have been disqualified, but MTV wanted CT to be able to win and go get his gold skull to bring that, to bring his storyline further into the episode. They just didn't say anything. And that is why they finished the race so quick. And we all noticed that we had said on the show last week, Oh, maybe they ended, 
like close to the edge of the drop zone. But if you rewatch the video, and I had to because I had to see, <laughs> it clearly looks like they land way outside the drop zone. And that Lolo for this one might be 100% right. So I'm jumping on that conspiracy train for sure. What if the conspiracy yeah, is Lolo's hip to all their tricks and they just didn't want her around spoiling anything? Oh, right. the conspiracy. The conspiracy is she knew too much. She knew too <laughs> much. <laughs> too woke she needs to leave uh i actually do believe that one too sadly i mean i'm still happy ct and big t won at the end of the day but we did notice that they dropped off quicker so i yeah i totally believe that but i think it's a two-parter even though i believe that that's what happened and maybe it was manipulated a little bit i think lolo is still very much a sore loser and that was her you know she's just putting out putting more out there as to why the show sucks and it's all right. luck. <laughs> right. And, and, and we like know we... that the producers are, are pulling strings right. to get certain people to win and stuff like that. Like, we're all hip to the game. Um, but we still enjoy the show for what it is. And yeah, right. you know, and it's fun to talk about the conspiracy. I've been talking about the conspiracy since day one when we were over at After Buzz. Like, right. episode one that I joined you, you ladies on, I was like, I threw a conspiracy out there. So I've been doing it, and I've been doing it my whole life watching this Dan's show. Dan's Conspiracy Corner. There it is. But guess what? Lolo and Nam, still not the winners at all. So, like, even if it wasn't really CT and Big T, it still wouldn't have been them, so. Well, That's Conspiracy tonight, Pam, what you thought kind of almost worked out your prediction but it wasn't josh voting for himself but somehow was manipulated so that josh and nani still got to go into the crater and it was josh and devin that fought each other and left which is kind of they were the two weakest men in the game they were on borrowed time anyway the writing was on the wall with them but it, it felt like it was expedited a little bit by production right like they were like how are we gonna get these two in there how are we going to get them out of the game? <laughs> I mean, I loved this, the beginning. After this, that battle, the show kind of fell off for me But tonight. But that, I thought, was amazing. I love that Devin picked. Can we just jump right into that thing? Yeah, or do you yeah let's, let's get into that. So okay. Devin, Devin picks Darrell, ladies, to go in. He can, CT says, your choice. It's your choice, baby. Whatever you want. He, his only options were Leroy, Fessy, Kyle or Darrell. That's all he could choose from. He couldn't choose Nam and Corey because they were mm -hmm. rogue. Did you like the choice, ladies? Loved Did you it. Like Darrell. Loved it. Yeah. I, I, I felt like it was great. I loved Devin. First of all, I came, I've gone full circle this season from yeah. disliking Devin to like now I love him. Um, every episode, I, right? <laughs> every episode, I love him every more episode. and more. But this one, if you're going to lose, you know, Darrell did put him there. It was Darrell's fault. Devin was there. Darrell's a champ. There's no shame losing to Darrell. Like, if you lose to Darrell, you're, that's not embarrassing. Um, it was a, a big blustering game. I felt bad for him. And I think it, he was so funny the way he addressed, like, boffing the puzzle, which yeah. is him his claim to fame. Like, the puzzle master who just couldn't do the puzzle. And again, I do maintain, I feel bad for people when they're at it, it just doesn't click. And like nothing you say could do, can make you see it. Yes. Um, so, right? Like it's so, either there or it's not in it's your head. That's why it's not. Yeah. Even if you have a knack, if you're, I played a spot the difference game with a five year old the other day and I was just blind. Like once I had to check the answers and I was like, I never would have seen, I've looked at that a thousand times and I didn't see it. So ladies, uh, I know this is in hindsight, but I think that Devin made the wrong choice. Oh. Now we knew it wasn't going to be a headbanger. We saw what it was. We've seen this game before this season. I think that Devin should have chose Fessy yeah, because there was a puzzle at the end. You could clearly see the thing at the bottom. They were going to have to take those pieces and put them there. I think Fessy would have struggled really bad. I think Devin should have chose Fessy. Fessy's you know, not dumb though. Fessy can do puzzles. I think. I think he would. I think he would have had a better chance against Fessy than uh, Jarrell. But that's my. That's my. That's who I would have picked. Possible. If I were, if I were Devin. I think at that yeah. point, Jenna, what do you what do you think about the whole Devin situation? I thought that it was awesome and the best, the most badass thing Devin has ever done by calling in a veteran, a very experienced veteran down there. Um, and the thing is, the part where Devin was on paper supposed to lack in this game was the rope swing and the collecting of the puzzle pieces. And guess what? He was actually neck and neck. Like mm -hmm. there was one point where Darrell hit his stride and got a few very quickly in a row, but Devin was always one behind, finished just as quickly. So it's weird that the part where he was supposed to excel the puzzle is where he really like flatlines and he just couldn't get it going. But Darrell is no slouch, as we know. Darrell's experience, he knows his puzzles too. 
Um, and at one point I wasn't feeling confident in Darrell either. I, I wanted Darrell to win this. Uh, and at one point I was like, he's going too slow. Um, but I do wonder, I think that Devin really, he would have had a better shot against anybody else. Probably. I mean, is Kyle's good at puzzles? Do we know if Kyle is good at Pulls I was more worried snapped. about Kyle's length getting the puzzle. I thought he was going to be able to get him really fast. I don't know if he would have done well at the puzzle, but he's so tall and gangly. I feel like he would have been able to get the pieces easier. But all that, also, they're united. Like, they're, so he wasn't going to pick Kyle. He wasn't going to pick, you know. That's true, too. They're Kyle, the CT, Devin. He could have picked Leroy. He could have picked Leroy, but. Yeah, but I guess what's the point of being united to somebody if they're out of the game? Well, it would have worked in his in favor of his numbers. If he were to stay, he right, would have had right. his numbers. That's correct. But do numbers right. really matter if you're not even in the game? So he picked Darrell and he lost. So if he had picked a weaker competitor, he'd still be in the game, even if everybody hates him and he doesn't have numbers. I don't know. But who's throwing that pick? out there? I mean, I guess right I, now, I, I, I think when Fessy and Kyle been, have probably would have been. Really? Have you seen Fessy do puzzles though? I'm so confused. Like, what, what Fessy so is pretty smart, actually. Oh, well, I mean, but where, where have we seen it, Pam? I just wanted to examine. I will say that I've seen it from Big Brother. That's why I've not seen it in the challenge at all. And I'm not um, saying that any of them aren't smart and that they wouldn't have played good. Uh, I'm just thinking they're they're neither of them are Darrell. Like Darrell is so he's you think been around the block. Kyle, you would you would have preferred him to go with Kyle, Leroy, or Fessy. Or Darrell's a CT, like a like right. a good at everything. Okay. But now that I'm thinking of it, I almost wonder if Devin figured he was going to, now he probably wouldn't figure he was going to lose because he's pretty self-confident and he saw this as a puzzle because he really did Darrell a favor at the end of the day because every other guy up there had their gold skull and Darrell didn't. So he gave Darrell the opportunity, you know? I think Devin knows he was on borrowed time. He knows he's not going to win a final. So it's like, eventually he's going to go out. Do you want to go out against Darrell or let Josh beat you eventually? Like, <laughs> I feel like he went out in a, with a bang. And even though he boffed on his thing, he was like, wow, man, I talked a lot of smack for mess. He was Devin. He was funny. I forgive him. At the same time, him. though, we knew this ended in a puzzle. I gave Devin 100% chance. I thought it was a 50-50 shot. I thought either of them could have taken it. Devin should have solved that puzzle faster. Darrell took a long time to solve it as well. So I'm telling you, if, if Devin just solved puzzles like he usually does, Devin would still be here. Yeah, he just didn't. It wasn't his day. It yeah. wasn't Those his tangerine day. puzzles, man. Those tangerine. What are they really called? Why do do you need to have kids to know what this uh, is? What's the tangerine? They, they said him a million. After he messed up and said tangerine, they said the well, real name Well, because CP was like me and my son do yeah. tangerine. Tang like, tangerine? Anagram, sure. Like Tanagram. But I, I, I didn't know. You know, I ain't doing any freaking puzzles. Not one. Not well, a single you know, we, one. We're, we're not on the challenge, so we don't have to worry about <laughs> it. We're all set. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's get it. So then we have CT, of course. He gets the he gets his goof. That's what he wanted. He wanted his goof. We knew it was gonna happen. Um, I it's funny, I, I usually circle who wins each game and stuff. Before, right when it goes to commercial, I circled CT like, yeah, there's no did. way Josh is winning this. So I thought that the I first part. I circled it. He did. Why was Josh so close to him in the puzzle part, though? I was like, why, Josh, why are you getting so many puzzles? You're right neck and neck. Oh, you mean just getting the pieces down? Just getting the pieces, yeah. But he still he, never he was like, got down there, though. Yeah. True. But also, okay, well, first of all, the first part that Devin, back to Devin and Darrell real quick, was so tense that I was like, good God, Lord, challenge gods, don't do this to me. What if CT, lo I was like, there's no, like going in for round two, I was like, okay, well, at least CT will, because I did kind of want to, I don't know, I didn't know who I wanted to, but I thought that was a tense match between, yeah. you know, and then I got really scared. And then, you know how Josh was upset about his editing, throwing the ball? <laughs> this one they had ct looking like spider-man like leaping off buildings and they had josh looking like a pterodactyl literally like flailing in the air like a pterodactyl i'm like he's not gonna like this editing he couldn't he get his that. feet under him pam he kept his feet kept like dragging along the platform he was like doo -doo 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 -doo. no no it was it was it was I mean, it was funny to watch, but yeah. yeah. But then seriously, CT why did they do Josh so dirty? They really had CT out there like a superhero in slow motion. Like 
badass. And then yeah, they, they didn't have any shots. They didn't have any shots to show Josh doing anything cool. But I think that's why he well, gives them. Brown. I'm sorry. You don't make up the character of a character, you know, like. I mean, I'm sure they, if they, even if they had the shot of Josh doing something cool, they wouldn't show it because it doesn't fit with his character. It just doesn't. No, CT uh, looks so cool out there. And I love when CT gets his like sultry Batman voice on where you need subtitles. You have no fucking idea what he's saying. Oh, like before so the challenge, like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm going down there. And like, it's like a seductive Batman. I don't know. It's interesting. Totally. <laughs> or Steve from um, Sex and the City. When he was talking to CT, to Big T, he was like, I was like, what? I don't know what accent this is, but it it's so it was so deep and, and grumbled. It was all cool. He gets so Boston, and guess yeah. who's from Boston or Massachusetts? Daniel Lindgren, and we never get that sort of. Well, talk I grew from up. Him. Uh, I grew You're up from the lake minutes. of Boston. I grew up 40 minutes outside of Boston. What most people don't know is if you don't live in Boston or in the out right on the outside, you don't get the accent. I never had the accent mm -hmm. growing up. You're a mass hole. Where are you from? We have to talk about this later. You know, I went to school in Boston. I had no idea. Okay. Oh, I'm from Sturbridge, Massachusetts, it's right near Worcester, Massachusetts, which is like a bigger city that people actually uh -huh. know about. And that's yeah. where I grew up for 25 years. And then I moved my ass to uh, Los Angeles and I've been here ever since. So. I left there because it was cold in Massachusetts. It, where, where, what, what school did you go to, Pam? Emerson. Oh, no. Yeah, very nice. cool. Yes, everyone went to Everett. Okay, so back with your, yeah, uh, now on Pam, Dan, and Jenna talk. Um, <laughs> Um, so yeah. um, I wanted to, um, all right, so CT solves the puzzle really quick and quick. super impressed. Super I mean, quick. If, if, if really, if, if that's all it takes is working with your son and just solving these, these tanagrams, my God, tanagrams. why is everyone not preparing this crap before you get on the challenge? My God, why are we all just be impregnating ourselves and having kids? Well, that too, right? So that we can practice puzzles with. Or hanging out, out with yeah. CT Jr. My you know? God. <laughs> oh, I wanted to throw this at you. You remember how there was that rumor like Devin and Josh are really friends. They're vacationing together in Mexico or somewhere oh. like that. No, I don't believe I don't that. I would pay to the only that reason, vacation. the only reason they were vacationing together is because now we know they got eliminated at the exact same damn time. Right. And yeah. they just traveled home together. That's right. all oh it was. God. Is that hilarious? I'm dying to see these two like sipping out of the same pina colada drink. <laughs> I see a buddy comedy. I see a buddy comedy. It actually would be really fun. Did you see the last two things they were like kind of saying to each other on the way out? Uh, uh, Devin's like, Big Brother sucks. And then Josh, like, can I punch him now? Because he's off the show and he's allowed right. to. Mm -hmm. That was kind of funny. I like that. That's funny. But did you also see Josh trying to hype himself up for this thing? Like, Nani's no. like, I got this. Josh, like, yeah, I got this. Yeah, I got this. I'm like, it's so awkward. It feels so, I feel, I felt bad for him. Like he doesn't have this. He's pretending he has this, but no one believes it. It was really, it was sad. I, All I right. Felt bad. So don't worry. I still hate Josh and will continue to make fun of him, but I'm starting to like, at least understand the lovable lug quality that like makes someone like Nani love him. Nani I'm not there. Nani I'm was not, I'm not over him. Cry. She was crying over him because he he's such a like he is such a doofy goofy. You can't genuinely probably wish him a ill. Doofy will. goofy. A doofy called, goofy. Yeah. In real life, he's probably just a gigantic teddy bear, like a clumsy, disruptive teddy bear that you probably I'm sure he's sweet, you know. Everybody. Yeah, he's such a doof on the show, but I feel like if I knew him in person, I would actually like him and be friends with him, probably. Yeah. He is such a doof on the show, though, and I'm glad they keep him doofy because the other thing that makes him so doofy is taking himself so seriously. It's always like my shut up Josh moment tonight was I'm doing this for my family before. the. It's like we get it, Josh. You're doing it for your family. One more time. One yeah. more time. Come on, keep it going. Everyone's doing it for their family. Like, come on. So, yeah. Ladies, besides this exciting elimination, I honestly think there's only two storylines that they just drag the crap out of for the next solid hour and 10 minutes and unfortunately one of them has to do with ct and the other one has to do with nam's back which they foreshadowed for the last three episodes so we already knew he had a bad back if you remember oh. during the mind challenge they had to dig down in each little mine he's like oh my back's killing me like we are i missed all that because i was like why they've been multiple him? times they've been shoving that down our throat like hey just so you all know nam has a bad back if you go back not that we're going to watch it again i promise you multiple times they talked about his back but let's get the ct it's the call heard around the world 
It's absolutely absurd. And here's my conspiracy about it. As we all know, CT overreacts when he wants to finally choose Cam. I honestly think to you ladies that the producers got in his ear before he made this announcement and said, Hey, CT, we know you're probably not going to stay with big T, but if you decide not to, can you make it like a ridiculously over the top non CT announcement? Like this didn't feel like something CT would do. He'd be mad or something, but he's like, he, like he's, that was so mean to do that to big T. I think the producers asked him to freak out and make a big thing about it. So they had a storyline for him for the rest of the episode and for, mm-hmm. and for Big T. That's my personal opinion. You can totally disagree with it. I, I, it's all good, but that's what I I'm do saying. think it was for TV and camera time as well. Um, not that he needs to have a reality TV type character anymore because he's CT, but I do feel like he's enjoying coming back to these challenges and getting his paycheck. It's helpful. He gets to compete. So I do think the explosion was probably for like the TV-ness of it all but I don't know if the producers influenced it, you know, or, and sometimes CT just is theatrical. Like Big T said it perfectly, like stop with the theatrics. Like it doesn't really take long to push his buttons. Like he can be very calm. And lately he's been more of like a dad and a godfather to the challenge and like a good temperament. But if you poke him enough, like Kyle in the kitchen, when we could see more of CT's cold cut snack in his mouth, then we could understand anything of what he was saying, like how his mouth was just full of like different. an animal. Yes. Yeah. So while Turkey was, well, while, while, while CT was eating that entire turkey, I, I completely agree, but I thought he was egged on there. And that's when he gets mad and riled up real fast. Like, but he was- just won, he just got a gold skull. So like he said, now he feels like he's here for a reason. Before he was just kind of like, here I am at the challenge, collecting my weekly paycheck. And now he's like, oh shit, here I am with my gold skull. I'm on my way to a million dollars now by Big T, Hello Cam. And so he does get theatrical. I feel like he definitely does explode at, at different times. Like it doesn't take a lot for CT to go from zero to 100. So him winning, I think gave him the adrenaline to that like freak out. But, was, but I think it was a little bit for like camera attention yeah, as well. I thought it was for camera, but it was weird to me because he was telling everybody to F off. And I'm like, wait, did everyone piss you off this season? Like I maybe did, who did, why are you effing everyone off? It was- I, Because everyone was made him- persona he was he was unpopular by the end of you know everyone because everyone loves big t they were all mad at him for not i mean everyone's commentary was well this well, was before sense. this was before they all before i mean this was right as he announced that he was choosing cam over big t oh you know, i think like, he, was, he told everyone to f off i was like what is going i don't think that was serious i mean that was you can f off and you can f off i mean i don't think that was all right all right all right i, I still maintain uh, yes cam's clearly better of a performer in these things than big t but big t was a good like she was a good partner and there's some of those challenges that i don't think he would have won with cam like i think big t's he didn't win anything though we are we all know that he, he was dq technically they just let him win right so he never him no, and well, they never won the hanging won. on like they've won a few things together and like that's a good team oh the hanging on one won. Won. yeah well, they, the thing is- they were oddly enough a partnership that worked and i'm not saying cam won't cam is obviously the superior competitor but somehow big t and ct really gelled and that the communication is important let's be honest you're right ladies they they gelled throughout the season good for them good for them yeah ct said it best and i completely agree with what ct said he said you're not ready for a final though that's where he lost thanks for helping me thanks for helping me it's the playoffs now babe and i'm not taking you to the playoffs with me yeah how arrogant though it, uh, it Again, was so... ladies, i'm telling you the producers like ct can you keep this going for us you're my only storyline because they, they that would have been a regular conversation that they would have like cleaned up and just been okay we're friends again i'm so sorry for what that i did was super condescending CT, and made, like... ct took it to the next level pam because i'm telling you these producers like we need a storyline cd can you be the bad guy for us for this season come on man and he did it you know, when he said it like i don't want to be mean but you're not ready for it. it's like don't you tell me like that was that's where i was and i am with her at this point i agree okay so let's break this down yes ct wanting to win a final might want to get rid of big t i get it he could have done it much cooler we all fine yes Two, in talking to her at that point, because I do think, I liked the little off camera where he was saying, do I be a scumbag or do I, and he seemed normal and down to earth and not hyped up or like crazy when he was talking about switching partners. 
And then even when he right. went to apologize to, to her, he started off sort of okay. And then he totally lost it when she was saying, well, can I just finish? Let me just say something. And he's like, no, because I know what you're going to say. No, no, no. It's like, all right, man, you just, you blew it. You blew it with Big T. And the way he's yeah. using her first name, not that he can't use her first name, but you're right. Everything just, his terminology sounded condescending that's because yep, that's you go to somebody to apologize, right? And then you end up um, like gaslighting them. I mean, I, I get his point. Maybe CT isn't, he doesn't know that she's ready to run a final because he hasn't seen it before. However, it's to be- him to decide. It's not, it's not him to decide. Yeah. Also to her credit, she- holds a lot of things close to her because she doesn't want to disappoint. For example, she was a swimmer and she never told anybody. She was, you know, on swim team and she's competitive enough, but she doesn't like to boast that because she's scared right. that she might not live up to that hype. Um, so I understand where she's coming from with that. This entire time, I just, this whole episode, I felt so awful for her because she's always the most optimistic person. She is supportive. She never lets anything get to her, but you, mm -hmm. you can tell from this episode, what an emotional connection she made with CT. Not romantically, on a friendship, yeah. supportive teammate level, she really just felt so strong and her confidence was built up so much because of him. And we saw it too, we loved it. We loved their connection, we loved their partnership because it felt like CT was truly a best friend to her mm -hmm. and made her feel good, made her feel competitive. But you see now she realizes she fell for it and it was pretty much just a character. So <laughs> now she feels like this person I trusted. I know that there can't really be that element of trust in the game, but it was more on like a, an emotional relationship level where it's like, I trusted you just as a friend because you made me feel good as a friend yeah. and a person. Now it comes to find out you were playing a character and now you're shitting on me. You were hyping me up when it was to your benefit. Now you shit on me because you're now you want to be real because I'm not your partner anymore. You don't need do you, me to perform well. Do you ladies blame CT for trying to be a good partner to in hype hype big T up throughout the season? Because he knew he was stuck with her in a way and he couldn't get out of it. He needed to, in theory, be that character that you're all hating on him for doing now. But I just there was obviously a better way for him to let her down more easy. We know this. But yes. that's why I really think that there's something more to it. Where like, they're I like, think you're right. can you just was... go to be a heel? Can you be our heel, CT? Because they're, he, I think regularly he would have just let her down nicely because who cares? What's right. the point of hurting this poor girl? She's so innocent and nice and sweet. There's no reason for CT to act that way, which is why I'm, I'm thinking there's something else going on here. He had to be, they asked him to be a heel. You, I, I agree, Dan. You've won me over that there's some conspiracy here because it's gone beyond just inconsiderate to like right. downright because, mean. Because to they, could have mean. It in, they could have squashed it in front of the campfire, which is what we all thought would happen. And then he took it to a next level and said, hey girl, you're not ready for a final. Like that's so mean. It's it's not that it's not true, yeah. but it's unnecessary. Well, now. I think it's untrue that, too, first of all. I think it. like- They're not partners anymore. It doesn't matter. He doesn't need to tell her that she's not ready for a final, but he still told her. Like it's so- right. Yeah, and I don't want it to seem like Big T needs to be pitied because I do think she is fierce and smart and good in her own way. And the one silver lining of this is after she was getting berated, she said, well, fuck it. Now I'm ready. She's like, well, now I do want to win. Now I do want to compete in a final just to spite him. So I hope to hell that she does. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from, Dan. He does have to hype her up throughout their partnership. He needs her. He needs her to perform well. So it's not that he's wrong for that. It's just that now it comes out. It, or now it appears as though, as though he was lying the whole time instead of it being like an authentic feeling of like, you got this, I love you, my friend, let's do this. Now it's like, oh yeah, like I didn't mean any of that. I was just saying it. That's well, what it it's seems interesting. like now. See, It's interesting you say that, Jenna, because remember last week I said that Big T was going to get squashed by CT, but you said that their relationship had changed and you thought they'd stay together. I know, I'm just saying, he fooled a lot of people. It wasn't just- yeah. I don't think he was fooling. Lead. I don't think he was fooling, but I think he could have said, hey, I love you. You were an incredible partner. I'm making this decision right now to maybe make a million dollars or not. And I'm right, sorry. But, T, right. I love you. Right. We, all, we all thought he should have done that, Pam. You're right. We all right but I'm saying like the, he was so extra about his rudeness to someone he, who didn't. Or I'm agreeing with you. That he, there let was more know, to he let it be known throughout the season, though, that he was concerned about Big T's performance and like, before, like her performing in general. 
But then, like you're, but then Jenna, you are right. Later on, he would say, "I'm so surprised by her. I really like her." Right. Like, you know, who know? Like I, that's why I think there's something more to it. I well, whatever it is, it's done. Well, that's, that's what I think is a little bit of BS. He has that bone though. Like as much as I love him, he used to do that to Diem sometimes too. I feel like where he would cut, be very complimentary towards her, and then ten minutes later, like be dragging her down. But again, well, that's editing I mean, and. If you, you're right, Jenna. If you remember him from like the real world Paris when he was on, he was a jerk on that show. He was, the, but maybe this guy, Adam, he'd berate this poor other cast member, Adam, all the time on that show. Yeah, but Adam was a dork. So what? That's not I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Adam <laughs> deserved it. No. Well, that was it. Was that when bullying was acceptable or something, Pam? I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah, that was when, but, when a bully could be a bully. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, he really turned the screws on Adam. Um, so anyway, I forgot my whole train of thought now that you said that, Pam. That made me laugh. CT, yes, not always. He's 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 grown over our years of, of and years and years of watching him into a lovable dad bod kind of guy. But no, he's still a fighter with a with a killer, you know, mentality. I did you believe Kyle? Kyle's so hard to ever read. I couldn't tell if he was joking. He's like, you fucking asshole, I hate you. And then he seemed serious. And I was like, come on, Kyle, you think- I, I, Again, stolen? I feel like that was for the cameras, Pam, because like, how did he not think that P Cam was going to get stolen from him? He's he did, but he didn't think it that, would be right? from ET. Whatever. I, 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 I thought yeah. that was crap. Okay. Um, the, the last thing they really show us, because I thought the rest of the storylines were all, they, they, they tried to show us Leroy and Casey talking. I'm like, okay, bore. Do we want to uh, talk about like the weird cesspool that was the hot spring? Oh, I liked that. I was like, I want to be in that. You? I liked it. Yeah, well, it was big sweet. enough. It was, a, it was like an actual pool. It wasn't like a little hot tub. So that it was, was a cool. spring, a hot spring. It yeah, was I know. I've, I've never been in one, but uh, uh, I've seen them around. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I love the idea of it. Like, I would like to go to one. I was happy that they were able to enjoy it. But I mean, the whole like first two minutes was weird close ups of everybody, yeah. like this, swimming in the hot waters. Jenna, <laughs> you asked, this, this whole episode, Jenna, was drawn out so long. And I'm going to get to another part later on that was drawn out, which was so unnecessary. But this was a filler episode. They gave us the big hype at the beginning. And like you said at the beginning, Pam, after that, it all went downhill. There was nothing else of any, because the only other thing they tried to throw at us was Nam's back. And it was right. really, uh, and, and of course, look, Nam is a great rookie. I think we all love him. And I guarantee you, he will be back. I have a really good feeling that they will ask him back again to almost have that redemption thing like they like to do for certain people, mm -hmm. um, certain challengers. So it was sad to see Nam go, but uh, now Big T, like, like I was, this is what I want to say. Big T is actually even more screwed now because she's a rogue agent. She can't compete in this all night thing to even try to get a win to get a gold skull opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish that Nani and not well and Nam went home. I would have liked to see Nani and Nam as partners with a healthy Nam. Because okay. I think Nani does well with a really good supportive whatever um yeah You're right because obviously josh was but yeah nom, nom. But turbo turbo and nani that was like the farthest she ever got that's what i'm saying a strong competitor that has her back and is nice and respectful like that's who well, she should nom be would have been that for her you're completely yeah. right yes yeah. and it sucks her big t not only that she's a rogue agent and she might not have her chance to get a gold skull but it also sucks that she had a partner in nom too like she went from ct to nom Nam is like just as good. She had an yeah. awesome partner she was going to now connect with. And he had a good temperament too. I feel like he was going to be a good match for her, but also just badass, strong, and awesome. Mm -hmm. So now that like is a double, this is, whole episode is just Big T taking L's left and right. And it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Um, let's get to what we get to see of this uh, torture challenge. See, uh, TJ keeps saying they're going to be tortured. I mean, I don't really know how bad that's really going to be. Let's be honest. It's like not staying up fun. late. Like, is that because it was a night? I think thing. probably it's you can't go to sleep. If you go to sleep, you're disqualified. I don't know who the heck knows, but it's called Mission Survive the Night. So clearly it looked like they, they showed like Kyle drinking some. Wait, sorry. Doesn't it sound like this, the name of this challenge is made up by a kindergarten, like a kindergartner. Mission Survive Five the night. night. <laughs> like this is a Nickelodeon episode. You're at a sleepover. Mission Survive the Night, guys. Yeah. Like, where's the mom? It does sound that way. That's like Mission Boogie Monster. Ooh, right. I get you the boogie man. <laughs> 
I don't know. Like, PJ's it, mission survived the night. And I was like, are we fucking kidding here? <laughs> I, I like that they're doing something different. It is the end of the season. So they're trying to mix up the, the dailies and not have them be so straightforward. They're doing an all nighter. I think it's, sure. it's something different. No, this looks great. So, yeah, yeah, this is exciting. like saw what they're like, locks. Cause this is when I was like, I need five more minutes. And then nothing happened in the five more minutes. I mean, yeah, I saw it was 625 and I'm like, oh, they're starting the challenge now. Oh, this will really be over in five minutes. I don't think so. This is lame. So. So what was the, like, so like they locked them in a cell. Is it like an escape room basically? Yes. yes. So they okay. have to escape supposedly. That's what uh, TJ said. I think they have to some, maybe somehow get unhandcuffed by completing different random little challenges. Okay. But my whole point was they could have used that last five minutes to at least start the challenge. Instead, they literally showed TJ locking up every single team. And I was like, this, I get it. I get that you're locking up. You don't need to show me every single one. So it was a waste of time. And they- Did you lock up? <laughs> hey, hey, they're telling the producers, like they're telling the air people on air, stretch it. Stre We're not ready for the guest yet. Stretch it. Uh-huh. I was over it. Yeah, yeah no, it. that's crazy. Give me an I hour mean, episode, probably, I need the hour and a half. Like, just end, it, just end it 30 minutes early. Who cares? Yeah, exactly my point, too. We're already getting all of these episodes for this season. They're already an hour and a half each. How much longer do they think that they really need to drag it out for? Yeah, yeah. this hour and a half thing, how many seasons has this been now? Maybe three or four at the most? It's you. It was an hour forever. It was never an hour and a half until a couple seasons ago. I mean, I like it to be an hour and a half if there's most of them have been action packed, but this one was like, yeah. all right, after that. I still think gonna... they could do an hour and it would be so action packed because an hour and a half it does for me, no matter how action packed it is, I feel like it drags a little bit. I would love an hour of just solid action, amazing crap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I do miss the drama a little bit. I feel like the drama this year is not like sloppy, drunk, stupid, petty shit. It's no. like all game oriented, which I guess is, is more stand up. It's, it's better. Uh, I don't know, but I like the petty, stupid stuff too. We I guess like the well, sloppy, drunk drama. And like, and like you're and to add to your point, Jenna, I want some hookups. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. Right. Yes. Don't, well, they, I love the classic hookup where Ashley would just like, remember when Ashley crawled into Kyle's bed one night randomly, the night she got back or something, like, or she yes. came on the show, just crawl. Like, it's hilarious shit. I want that stuff. Right. Like, we need more slutty challengers. Like, we don't have enough slutty challengers anymore. I, why not? Kyle, the sluttiest challenger, is like, in relate. they're all in relationships. That's we the need, issue. That's the issue, Pam. They're all in relationships yeah. now. And they're, hey, you know what? I, they're being faithful. Good for them. But bring some new blood in here. People well, that's why we need the up. rookies to all hook up and stuff. They're not supposed to be real competitors. It's supposed to hook up. And then, so Gabby and Fessy last week, that was just, that was it. It was just like a fun. No, well, they show a preview of them kissing in the next oh. episode, a big deal. But well, you know, now that Gabby and Corey are partners. <laughs> Corey is a uh, father now. I don't think he's going uh, down. He was a father when he met his new mother's mother wife. <laughs> Corey's doing really good though. I don't Corey is so cute too. Like he, uh, yeah. he looks cuter now too, as like with his glasses and like his, I'm a dad now. He is real he cute. Bought, he bought a pair of glasses and so now he's just much more mature. He's very mature now. He's a changed man. Mm -hmm. Nothing like a good pair of $50 glasses. <laughs> But there's some other things I wonder that were brought up, like, is Corey cool with Fessy now? Like, there's some things that have just fall by the wayside right, that were sort right. of set up. It's oh, like, yeah. what the we, heck's we going on with that? that? Existed. We forgot that even existed. Yeah, well, poor Corey has been out of everything because he's, I don't know, never sure. as a partner. But yeah, like, where do, where does Corey stand in terms of all this if it comes? Well, I'm just excited to see it. Really. Well, yeah, it's Corey, really Corey's the only one, Corey's the only dude without a gold skull. Oh and really? Yeah, everyone else has one. Because Nam went, Nam yeah, went home. Nam the only one that didn't have a gold skull. And then as far as girls, it's Big T, Nani, Gabby, Gabby. But Nani, they still yeah. have to fight for one more. So if they can get two girls in that don't have a gold skull, you know, then one of them would get it instead of having to put one in with a gold skull, because then that could drag it on too. So yeah, they should just put them all down there, throw a stick, and say, get <laughs> first one to come out of the hole with the stick is the winner. And they get the last gold skull. You know yes. what would be cool, Jenna, if they did for the last girl gold skull, throw all three of them down there somehow and just say, whoever wins, wins. One person. And then there's your final. I don't know how cool would get a gold skull. I don't know. 
Corey still needs a gold skull, though, so he's going to try to steal at some point. Yeah. So maybe Corey wins this week, and then he can fight for one. But Or he's going to be really pushing to get thrown down there. But who in their right mind would throw Corey down there? Because I guess if two gold skull guys go, one will get eliminated, the gold skull goes back into the thing, and then Corey can try to get that one again. I don't know how it would work if two gold skull dudes went against each other. One Do gold you skull like back. where the gold skulls are affiliated right now for the guys team meaning do you like the guys that have them and are you okay if Corey leaves or would you guys rather Corey have a gold skull and if so which guy i want Corey to take fessy's gold take skull. fessy's okay sam okay. has a huge crush on Corey, jenna <laughs> but also <laughs> it'll pay him back for sending home nelson he did nelson dirty that's Fessy's oh nelson that would be great dirty. That would be great. Yes. I would and I would that. love payback for Nelson. Yeah. Corey, this one's for Nelson. Yeah. yeah. And like beat Fessy and take Remember, him out. Um, who are girls story. even rooting for at this point? Guys and girls. Pick a guy and a girl that you want to win. Someone wrote in our comment, like? who do you think will win? But I just want to see who do you want to win? Like, because well, I don't know. Cam, I would be happy about. Cabrell. Cam. Oh, well, what if Cam and Leroy won? That would be cool. Cam would be. Well, CT and Cam, I like as a pair. Like sticking oh, with the pairs now. We're thinking the pairs have to win. Okay, we're thinking the pairs have. And to win. I like Leroy and Casey. Those would be my only two. Yeah. I, I love. I, yeah. I mean, I I'll pick Kyle and Nani, but Nani doesn't even have a gold skull, so like I don't even. <laughs> I yeah. do like Kyle as well. I like Kyle. I just think he's he's really grown. I mean, I always like Kyle. I, I thought he was honest about his player ways. He's like, I mean, I know he lied to Kara a lot, but I also wasn't a huge fan of Kara, so whatever. But, uh, oh, I brought Kara up again. Everyone's every week, they're like, Dan, how do you keep bringing Kara up? I'm like, I'm sorry. I find a way. I don't mean to. Yay, Kara. I don't Dan plan Paul, these yeah, things. Kara okay? lives. I don't plan these things. I don't plan these things. <laughs> Kara lives. Kara lives. <laughs> Long live. Um, yeah. Kara Maria. But Kyle, I didn't get to appreciate how truly hysterical he was when I was upset for Kara. Kara lives. Um, but <laughs> now I just, Kyle is like my favorite part of the well, show. Well, how I about Kyle favorite. tonight, Pam, then? You must have loved tonight when he was like, was so Donnie, funny. I'm back. He's like Jim Carrey all of a sudden. On the, like, he's just got big teeth and he's just, yeah. <laughs> Kyle is the best. And isn't it funny because I feel like four seasons ago, we were like, Kyle's the worst thing ever existed. I, I think I was the only one standing up for Kyle. I was even Kyle for Halloween when we dressed up. Right. At uh -huh. I was Kyle that year. So I was always a fan right. of Kyle. And we hated you that day. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't talk to me for some reason. I didn't figure out why until after. Right. Wonder why we kept calling you like Fuck boy and yeah, what was that about? No, he had that one rough season where he left jewelry in Car Maria's bed. Yeah, I was but bad. That was like, dude, you're the worst. But <laughs> he has gone nowhere but up, up, up since he then. He leave, is awesome. He did leave her jewelry. That was great. Yeah, and he, he got when like, he lost. When he lost, he went and left jewelry on her like bedside. The most right. F boy move of all time. Like he totally. was being a pirate F boy that season. So yeah. much. Yeah, that was his worst season. But he's so great now. <laughs> so great yeah. now. Again, would love to see the buddy comedy of him and Polly, um, <laughs> like a, a caper against Josh and Devin. Uh, put the four of them in the house. Uh -huh. the real, world, real world, people stop getting polite, start getting real. Yeah. Why don't they do that? They should do a real world type show with some of these challengers, the ones that really don't get along great. And then they'd have a great show of just drama. No challenges, no nothing. Put them in a damn house, like the old school classic seasons of the real world and see yeah. what happens. But I also think they should put some new challenges in too to get hookups going. But yeah, that's just- Or me. make them like kind of incorporate it. Remember in the real world when they would like have them do a business. Like it was- yes. always, Right, they like they could do that. Life. Cause that's so almost like apprentice, which I used to love like the business challenges. So you're in a house, it's not, it's not drama, like physical competitive, but you still get to make fun. You know, you still get people's strengths and weaknesses. coming. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, look, if we're not, we're just pitching ideas to MTV right now. Yeah. I don't know why they wouldn't take these because yeah. they can have them for free because we're not going to call them out. I guess it'd be hilarious if they did it though. Cause then we would just call them out on this show. For the right. Reason. So here's some tea. Um, when I used to live in LA, I knew people who worked in production and I knew somebody who, uh, whose friend was a PA on X on the beach in Malibu and they, or maybe it was on Hawaii, but they said that the PA had to clean all of their dishes. So whenever they cooked, whenever they ate in the kitchen, the people who lived in the X on the beach house didn't even clean their own damn dishes. And one, it's like, how lazy 
what is the purpose of that? And also, if you watch like Jersey Shore and Real World, that was the cause of that's some half the drama fights. So that's oh my god. The best drama of living with people is when you get pissed off when they don't right. clean their shit. So the fact that they were having PAs, production assistants, clean their dishes is like you're taken away from some good, easy petty drama here that you didn't have to do anything all you have to do is allow them to have dishes and a sink and you already have like a script right know, but so the the reason i think that they do that though is i feel like x on the beach is all about either you're hooking up with someone or you might hook up with someone else they don't want any all they want is the hookups they don't want any other drama they just want people so you to can't clean your plate well no no i'm not saying i'm not saying sure. not bougie af that they can't clean their own shit I'm just saying, I think the producers want the focus of the drama to be on getting mad at each other yeah. over different hookups and stuff, not over dishes. That's all I'm saying. But it's telling if someone doesn't wash their dishes, like, right, it'd be like, you want to hook up with him? You can have him. He didn't wash the dishes at home and he yes. won't wash them for you. Yeah. Yes. Dirty boy. Yes. Even me and Luke, it's a point of contention. Like, that mm. is household drama. Dishes. It is. People- it is, Jenna. I'm with you. That they 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 took away one of their drama avenues. Well, to quote the great Vince Vaughn from The Breakup, who likes to do dishes? So, right. Uh, yeah. No, that's the point. But yes, I'm with you, Dan, because I often think of. But I want you to want to do it. Yeah. Why would I want to do Why it? Why would I want to do dishes? Right. Yes. I, I I love that. I'm I'm with you. I know that line. That, yeah, that hits a little bit too home, man. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> You know, everyone just take care <laughs> we have to say everyone just do your own dish do your own dishes do something fucking clean it <laughs> right away right away because i'm guilty right of it, but i'm letting it sit i'm like it's it's so it's so good. yeah <laughs> resting. see i'm i'm the type of guy that i will use one dish when you should really be using three or four just because i only want to clean that one dish if i have a pile of food with it's like mm-hmm. it's unnecessary I'm not gonna wash more than one dish. I don't feel like it. Nope. So I'll just or you cut. Off. Sometimes I use just like a paper towel as a cutting board because oh, yeah. I don't take out the cutting board. Oh, yeah, the old plastic <laughs> bag cutting board. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> plastic bag, and that's the cutting board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wash another plate. See, all money. three of us are going through the same stuff, just in different parts yeah. of the world. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. different. And yeah. they should too on X on the Beach. Uh-huh. It should be mandatory. Yep. I'm going to write a, a, a letter to production. Don't you do the dishes. Ladies, any Dear Mr. Murray and Mr. Uh-huh. Bunham. Yeah. Uh, final thoughts, ladies, on episode 12. Any other thoughts on it? Any other predictions you want to throw out there? Any hot takes before we go? I just, like, let's just keep this moving, man. Yeah. Let's get this season going. I want to see TJ's long. final. I want to see what TJ whipped up for everybody. Yeah, so you're you're ready for this TJ's season to be done, Jen, is what you're saying. I'm ready yeah. for TJ's final. Okay, fair enough, fair and enough. And again, I want to reiterate, if anyone knows the low, low truth, drop it to us in the comments, because I am, what an interesting thing to come out and say, they forced me to leave and not address why. Yeah. Uh, maybe she did, but I swear on all the fan forums, I can't. No, I looked into it. I looked into it. So too. I, I don't think that she ever said why, which I think, which is why it's a great conspiracy. Because if there was a really good reason that she's, maybe she's embarrassed about something, who knows, but why wouldn't she tell right. why Especially she if you're coming nothing? out with the knowledge that you did not, in fact, willfully leave. I don't think Lola was going to be invited back anyways. So I think that's also why she threw out all this stuff. Because she's like, because if she wanted to come back on the show, which I don't think she wanted to, or they weren't going to ask her no matter what. But that's why I also think she was not afraid to just say everything. Right. You know, and she did like, just win the Olympics. Yeah. Didn't she just win the Olympics like a couple of weeks she ago? She did something really well there, I heard. Oh, yeah, she amazing. won. No, she's yeah. a champion. Like she won her thing. So. And that's fantastic. Good. Yeah, Great. That's Yay, Lolo. Yeah. They want, oh, you know what's a, a fun little tea thing? They want to bring on that other Olympian who I love, uh, Hazel. Louise? Louise. Uh, yes. yes. We love her. She, yeah. she, I, I find her so attractive and she's so. Uh, smart and just and fun funny and funny with west the stuff that she's oh yeah best. yeah she's the best I loved her so i'm excited, I'm excited her. To yes. her i we hope they bring on. her back too she's amazing season 37 come on and after buzz and she was always just lovely and so cool was so just happy to mm-hmm. participate <laughs> it was just harming cool. delightful yeah, yeah. Just like i think a i don't think anyone's gonna beat her i know we said that about lolo too but i think that L- Luis has a different mental game than lolo and i think and Luis she's likable like, like not to vice versa but i think she'll make alliances and friends and get you know sure she's gonna be great i hope they I hope they put her on i really Full do package 
Yeah. Yay! That's okay. good news. Yes. All right. Great. All right. Great. Okay. How are we? How are we out? <laughs> great, great, great. All right. We'll see yeah, you all next week for episode right. episode thirteen. Next week we'll be there. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.